guys, welcome back to my channel, Carrie's Digital Drawing. So something that I see online quite frequently is how to create the grid method in Sketchbook Pro on the mobile devices especially. Currently, Autodesk does not offer a simple solution for creating the grid method, but I use it every day whenever I start a new drawing, so I have found a technique that I really like, and I thought I would share that with you guys today. So here I have a couple uh, grid methods done. So. Here I have a mountain scene, it's a 2560 by 1600 pixel, and you can see the grid on it. And the next canvas over is the exact same size, and if you see, the grids are very similar. So uh, the grid boxes on the right and the bottom aren't quite full size, but they still match up, so that's perfect. Here in this next example, I have a 1500 by 1500 canvas um, with an owl. And again, you can see the squares on the right and the top for this one don't quite match up. But again, exact same on both canvases and they're both the exact same size. So it works out perfectly. So yeah, let me show you how I do this method. So we are going to start by adding a new sketch. So what you want to do here is you want to really pay attention to your canvas size. That's really important. So make this how big you want your final piece of art to be. So if you wanted to do a square, a landscape scene, a portrait style. So, you know, pick your canvas size and make sure you memorize the, the dimensions. For this example, I'm going to use a 1500 by 1500 canvas. And of course, the next step we want to do is add our reference photos. So let's browse our library. So in Sketchbook Pro, you can import uh, photos from most of your device. Um, so I've got like my gallery, drive, Dropbox, photos. Uh, so yeah, a good variety. I'll go to my gallery here and we'll just pick a nice landscape photo. Let's see what we have. So I really like the scene of this uh, in between this rock. It kind of looks like a like a canyon with a river flowing down. So as you can see, the reference photo does not fit the screen. We're gonna change that by zooming and moving the photo around. So what you're essentially doing is cropping your photo within Sketchbook Pro. So for this one, I'm gonna definitely need to zoom in because zoomed out, it does not cover the white. And now that I've got the top and bottom white, I can move the picture around to you know, form my composition. So this is kind of a handy tool to form your composition within the canvas size you're gonna be working on. So this, this method's a little bit twofold. You don't need to edit your photos beforehand because you can just come in here and crop it, design your composition, get your grid down, and then you can start drawing right away. So that's part of why I really love it. So I quite like the sandy scene here on the right. I'm just contemplating this here for a second, but I quite like that. Um, gives a little bit of interest um, on the rock. I'm think thinking about the rule of thirds here. And I think, I think this is good where the rocks lie. It'll lay on some of the sections. So I think that's good. So I'm gonna stick with that. So the next step now is you're going to add a blank layer on top of your reference photo so you have something to draw your grid on. And for this, this is a pretty dark picture, so I'm just going to knock down the opacity just a little bit so we can see our uh, grid lines. So again, make sure you have that uh, clear layer selected, and then we are going to make sure we have the... Uh, I use the technical pen out of the basic library, but use whatever pen or marker you want to use. As long as it creates a nice, solid, thick black line, you're good to go. So the next thing we want to think about, so we're going to enable our ruler tool and I'm going to show you guys here what I'm talking about. So when you're doing your photo, you're kind of, you've already kind of have an idea of how many grid squares you want to be on it. So we have to keep in mind with Sketchbook Pro that we can't change the size of the ruler. We can only change the angle, but we can change the size of the canvas and how it works with the ruler. So for example, if I zoom out on this, you can see that the ruler takes up more space on that image until it can almost essentially take up the entire thing. Whereas if we zoom in, it takes up less and less and less of the image to the point where we could get some really small grid squares on there if we wanted to. If you're doing this, pick your zoom and remember it. You're going to need to know what it is when you do your uh, canvas grid layer. All right, so I usually do it to 100%. I like that style. It gives nice big squares. Um, you know, this is going to be personal preference. So do some experimentation, decide uh, what zoom level you like. So now that I have that established, I'm going to hide this user interface so I can work on my 
grid now. So for this step, it doesn't matter if you start with your horizontal or vertical, just remember if you start at the top or the bottom or the left or the right, this is gonna be important in the next step. So I will line this up and just start drawing my grid. So you can see the ruler here makes it really easy. The line snaps to it, no problem. Nice and quick. I'm glad I uh, turned down the opacity. This is a dark photo I picked, holy. So again, because that ruler never changes size, you're creating very even boxes, so it's perfect. So as we get to the bottom, this is why I told you start on the top or the bottom, because we can't do another full ruler on the bottom, but that's okay. You'll see how that works in a minute. So now to use this ruler, I'm gonna take two fingers and I'm going to, whoa, or in theory, I could just rotate the, uh, the canvas. That works as well, right? No, just kidding. There we go. We're gonna just uh, grab the ruler with two fingers and then we are just going to rotate it. There we go, just being a little bit funky here. So we're gonna snap it to 90 degrees or zero degrees, depending if you're working on your horizontal or vertical. So we're working on the vertical lines now. So I'm starting from the left. So again, just remember, are you starting from the left or the right? It does not matter. Just remember where you start. And start drawing my lines now. I do perfect about where the ruler sits on the previous line as long as it's really close. Off, um, because it is hard to get it perfectly lined up. It does have a bit of a mind of its own, but it gets the it gets the job done otherwise. So again, here you can see on the right hand side, not entirely full grid scores, but that's okay because we know we started on the left side. So now that that's done, we'll turn off our ruler tool and we're gonna save this image to our gallery. So gallery, save current sketch. We'll let it save. And now we're gonna create a new canvas that's the exact size and dimension. So 1500 by 1500. My goodness, this is taking a long time to save. I do apologize. All right, so this is where it gets a little bit important. So now we wanna make sure our canvas is the exact same zoom. If it's a different zoom, your grid squares are not going to be the same size, okay? So now that we have the zoom correct, we're gonna turn on our ruler, hide our user interface. So I know from my vertical lines, I started from the left. I'm just gonna go ahead and draw my lines in. Try not to get too perfect about where my ruler sits. Let me know in the comments if you're a bit of a perfectionist like me, because Sometimes I swear I spend too much time trying to finesse all the little details that don't actually matter when I could be just drawing, but what do you do, right? No, I don't know how that happened, my apologies. Yes, if Sketchbook Pro could get a proper grid method in here, that would be wonderful. But you know what, I quite like this, it, it works. You know, it does the trick. I'm glad that at least the ruler is, uh, a block instead of a line like it used to be. Uh, in the old version of Sketchbook Pro, you never would have been able to do this. This method would not have worked because um, it was just a free line. So you never knew if it was perfectly squared off. So it would have taken a lot longer. But because this is more like a traditional ruler just without the notches and the measurements, it uh, creates perfect squares every time, which I really like. So again, you can see here, on the right hand side, our, uh, our grid was not, or our canvas was not big enough to make another grid square. And then for the horizontal lines, I started at the top, just like I did on the other one. So just go through and again on the bottom, not top full grid squares, but that is perfect because that will match our uh, reference photo. Oops. All right, so now we are going to save our image again. We're just gonna make sure that we didn't make any mistakes, that the grid squares look really good, that they're close. So yeah, they look pretty close to me. Um, the right squares look a little off, but I'm not gonna stress too much about it as long as it's close, uh, that's perfect. So now how I do this for the drawing, the transfer of my image, I depend. this will depend on your device. So do some Googling, figure out how multi-window works on your device. Most devices have it. Some you can do the window side by side. Sometimes it's a window above your main window. It just depends. So just do some research. So for me, I am on a Samsung Note 10.1 2014 edition. And for our multi-window, it's actually kind of a another 
window that hovers on top of the other window and I quite like that. So I'm gonna open up my canvas and then I'm gonna pull the screen from the right. I'm gonna open my gallery. So everything that I've saved in Sketchbook Pro goes to my gallery. So find your Sketchbook preview file and your reference photo so you can open another window using your gallery. And voila, there's my reference photo with the grid. I can minimize it. I can do my drawing and then I can open it up again when I need to refer to something. Oh, that didn't work, sorry. There we go. So do some research. Another option, of course, is to export the photo to another screen, your phone, another tablet, something, anything that you can be looking at it while you're drawing, however you wanna do it. But this is the way that I get my grid onto my reference photo and my canvas. Now I know that the uh, canvas is the same size as the photo, so in terms of proportions, everything should be accurate, so we should be ready to rock and roll. If you guys have any other solutions for creating a grid method in Sketchbook Pro, please feel free to let everyone know in the comments. It's so great to know how everyone else does everything, their techniques. Um, otherwise, I can't wait to see you guys in a future video. Thanks, guys. Bye.